Well, hello everyone. Uh, a couple days before I started this video, my son and I were playing uh, vignette number 23 from this book, 28 Vignettes for Two Trombones by Richard J. Fote. Bob McChesney promotes this book on his website, and if you go there, you can find videos of him playing these vignettes with other incredible, if not legendary, trombone players, so you might want to check that out. At any rate, as my son and I played through the duet, I thought it might be fun just to turn on the equipment and capture raw video footage, if you will, of us playing the duet. And that's posted on my YouTube channel, so you can go see that video if you're interested. So as I listened back to it, I thought it would be interesting to play maybe 15 or 20 seconds of that original video we recorded and point out all the problems as I hear them, and I think you'll hear them as well, and discuss those a little bit, and then play a second recording where I went back and tried to correct some of those problems and see if you can hear a difference. So let me go ahead and play just the beginning portion of that original video uh, from the other day. Okay, so as I listened, I wrote down some things that I wanted to work on before I re-recorded. I'm going to bring the tempo up to the recommended tempo. We had played it a little bit slow and it kind of dragged through. So I'll bring the tempo up to the recommended 104. I'm going to work on the articulation between the notes. I noticed that the tonguing was a little bit hard. and I think some of that has to do with how well you warm up, uh, whether your mouth is dry and maybe you're playing too quickly and not giving yourself a break before the next uh, thing that you do, the next thing you work on, so you tend to just get that little bit of swelling and it makes it very hard to get nice smooth transitions between the notes sometimes. So I'll work on the articulation between the notes, a softer tongue, quicker slide action, and I'll probably utilize some of the natural break between the partials on the horn. I don't always do that, it depends on whether it sounds consistent or not. Sometimes when you go between the natural breaks and the tongue and you get kind of an inconsistent um, articulation in the phrase. But I'm going to try and, and use that to some degree. There's some phrases where I'm going to complete, like the very first phrase, I'm going to try and complete that in just one breath rather than break it up. And I think that'll help just to play that whole phrase continuously without, you know, if I take it, it can just fill the tank and play it in, in one breath. I have to work on the attacks. There's a number of places where I don't attack the note well, or it's not really a crack, but it's not you don't center the note from the start. And this has a lot to do with um, being familiar with the, the, that particular note on the horn. In other words, you have to have a sense of the pitch in your mind. You want to have the muscle memory of the embouchure and of course the right slide position so that you can attack the note at the right pitch. Uh, when one of those things is out of alignment you'll get that crack or that the, the note won't sound properly when you start it. And I think this is important especially if you're playing pieces where you don't know the melody. You might be sight reading a piece on the second part and really it helps a lot if you have those components, the pitch in your brain, the embouchure muscle memory uh, to attack a note so that you don't start on the wrong partial or sort of flub the note from the start. So I'll work on the attacks. Uh, make sure I try and center the pitch. It's a bad habit of mine which I've had for a long time where in ballads or slow pieces I tend to kind of scoop up into the center of the pitch. I start a little bit low and scoop up and uh, I've worked on it. It's gotten better over the years but I still hear it quite a bit in my playing so I'll work on that. And then I'm going to try and add some vibrato. I don't use a lot of slide vibrato. I'm not really that good at it. I do use some subtle lip vibrato in pieces, which I'm more comfortable with. But I think in this piece, I'll try and use some actual, uh, I mean, some 
little bit more aggressive slide vibrato and see how that sounds. And then just from a technical recording side, I'll put it into separate channels. Um, before I do the video, I'll actually record a nice, uh, nice uh, clean parts in separate channels with the headphones on and the click track. Uh, so it's, it's well balanced and, and I get a good sound out of it. Uh, a lot of times when I record the very first part especially, I'll go in and I'll fix any little pitch issues after I record it just so because it's hard when you're not when you're playing by yourself that first track. The second track tends to be a lot easier because now you have a, a pitch reference as you're playing. So I'll do those little minor corrections, I'll add some space designer reverb in Logic Pro, and then let's take a listen to the final recording and see well if it sounds better and if those if I was able to achieve some of those corrections. Mm -hmm. 